when we talk about um, walking a walk, what does that really entail? What does that affect? Well, it should affect our relationship with God, first and foremost, as we do what he would have us to do and, and live a lifestyle that's pleasing to him. It's going to affect our relationship with our family. Um, I don't know about you, but, you know, our family has had its shared drama. But as we have matured in the things of God, I've seen so much less of that, so much peace, so much uh, fellowship, so much sweetness. It's just a blessing because as we walk in the truth that God has given us, it then has translated over and impacted our relationships as a family. Um, my sister Beverly was with me yesterday. I was ministering at the um, Aspen Woods Senior Living Place and, and she blessed me when she introduced me and she, as she said, she gave me my flowers while I was living and gave me you know, encouragement and, and spoke of the things that she was proud of me about. That's what it means when we are walking in the uh, faith and, and walking in truth. Nobody got to hate on anybody. Nobody got to be jealous because what God has for you is for you. And what God has for me is for me. We can love on each other and celebrate each other. Uh, but when we're younger and we don't know Christ, Lord have mercy. We had our drama. Should impact the way you deal with your spouse. It is a profound mystery, as the word of God says. Should in fact the way you deal with others, you know, whether you encounter them at work, in the street, on the phone, <laughs> nothing like <laughs> uh, being on the phone thinking you're calling a business. I remember one time I was calling um, because I was complaining. This person had messed up my mom's uh, cable account and I'm upset and I'm calling. I got my, you know, both guns drawn. And they were like, oh, is this? Let he car, like, you know, minister the car. <laughs> like, you got to make sure you come correct at all times because you never know <laughs> when you're going to encounter somebody. So we want to live in a way that's pleasing at all times. How we deal with our enemies. Because, see, we can't just curse our enemies when we're in Christ because he has given us a different standard. All right. So we're going to jump in looking at Ephesians 1 and 1. Turn there with me, if you will. And while you do, here are some of the things that I want you to think about when we're looking at scripture together. And when you're reading it on your own as well, what, I, what we call the five W's and H. Now, I say that to say things that you can look at to help you unpack the meaning, but these W's, Sometimes can be worded differently. I see different teachers use different questions. The key is that we're probing deeply into it, not just reading it and acting like, oh, that was a nice story. We want to see how to unpack it, what it means, how it affects us. So what are some of the things you can look at? Who's writing it or who's speaking in the text, in other words? Um, who is the, the uh, voice that you're hearing? Um, who are they uh, speaking it to? Um, are they addressing this to, you know, the ungodly, or addressing to the God? You always want to kind of look at it from the standpoint of what is this writing about? Who is this person writing to? What are they writing or who, uh, who are they, pardon me, and who are they writing to? And when is it occurring? You know, what's the, what's the time and other thing? Uh, where are they? How does it apply to you? In other words, all of these are things that kind of give us the context of the text because we want to see, you know, what's going on. When Jesus, for example, says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Why did he say that? Who was he talking to? What was the context? To fully understand it, you want to kind of ask these types of questions to give you an understanding of the text. In this instance, we're looking at Paul. Look at Ephesians 1.1 1, 1 with me. Ephesians chapter one, verse one. And that's this book, Ephesians, is going to be the main book that we're going to be looking at during this season, uh, series rather, to look at what it is that it means, what does it mean to really walk the walk that we talk? So Ephesians one and one says, Paul, that lets us know Paul is the author. Paul is the one speaking. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. So who's writing? We know it's Paul. 
Who is he talking to? He's talking to the faithful saints. He's not talking to the heathens. He's not talking to the unbelievers. He's not talking even to those who are questioning, is Jesus real? You know, there are different places in scripture where different audiences, Jesus talked to the Pharisees. He talked to the Sadducees. But this is the uh, book is written to those who are faithful believers. They're not questioning whether God is real or not. So he's taking them to a place of understanding some of the dynamics of their relationship with God. So what's the, what's the context, if you will? Well, this is Paul's ministry. Paul went through with Ephesus in his second and his third uh, missionary trips. The issue issues that he raised are fairly varied. Uh, he talks about predestination. He talks about the times that we're living in. Um, and we're gonna explore some of that. But for sake of this general context, he's ministering to them, the, the uh, people that he's led to Christ. He's writing from prison. Um, in Rome, he was locked up and he wrote several epistles. And this is one of those that is known as a prison epistle because he wrote it and then sent it to him. So they're in Ephesus, but he's in Rome. And then how does it apply to you? Well, if you're a faithful saint, I believe this word is for you. If you're a believer, this word is for you. Uh, and so we are gonna delve in to see what is God speaking to us about being people who walk the walk. But before we jump there, God takes us first to show us who he sees us as right now, how we are in his eyes. And that's important. How do you see you? You know, how? what are the things you say to yourself? You know, what's that self-talk that you have? Is it in alignment with how God sees you? Or are you saying negative things about yourself and always putting yourself down or questioning your abilities. What does your, how does your confession about you line up with God's perspective? Because God has some very clear uh, ways that he defines how he sees you. We're gonna look at those in Ephesians one. So let's look at it. Keep reading in that same chapter. Let's pick up from verse two. It says, grace to you, and peace from our, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Thank you, Jesus. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. And depending on which version you read, King James, says a little dish differently, stand, English standard. But this is the essence of the things with you. I want you to circle in those verses that we just read, because this is how God sees you. First of all, he says you're blessed. Somebody ought to say that to themselves. I am blessed with God Almighty. He said you're chosen. You weren't just chosen randomly. You were chosen before the very foundation of the world. God had you on his mind before he even created heaven and earth. He had already decided who you were going to be, that you were going to be a part of his beloved. And I don't know about you, but that makes me uh, feel a lot better about myself. Because sometimes in life, people can make us feel like we are not chosen. We're the last ones. I like Pastor Jenkins like to give his testimony when they used to play basketball. You know, they say, I'll take him, I'll take him. He would always be the last one left. And they say, oh, you can have him. But God chose us on purpose, intentionally. We're going to unpack all of these things a little more. Holy and blameless. Do you say that about yourself? I'm holy and blameless. That's what God says about you. You're predestined in him. You're not an accident. It's not even con coincidence that you are in Christ today. 
He predestined you. He adopted you into his family. Uh, praise be to God. He adopted us. You know, some people feel rejected, but God says, no, I didn't reject you. I adopted you. I claimed you. You are graced. That's because you have so much grace bestowed upon you. I came up with the word grace. Beloved of God, redeemed by God. Thank you, Jesus. Forgiven by God. Lavished with the riches of his glory. All of these are the ways that God sees you. Why is that important? Because we all, if you've hung around me anytime, you've heard me say a million times, as a man think of, so is he. As a woman think of, so is she. That's what the word of God says. So when you speak about yourself, you need to only agree to say what agrees with the way God sees you. Any way that you speak of yourself that's outside of how God speaks of you is a lie. It's not of God. It's even sinful because you, in that moment, are calling God a liar. Never thought about that, I, I wonder. But God has said all these wonderful things about you. So you want to own them and confess those things about yourself as well. So I thought it important that we start out first before we even do anything else. Let's talk about this. Let's confess what God said about us. Let's agree with God about what he says about us. Read this with me. I'm going to let you unmute so you can say it with me. Hold up. Let's say it together. One, two, three. Oops. I am, I am forgiven. Forgiven. Oh, my hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's okay. start, start all over again because I hit okay. the button accidentally. Okay. All right, here we go. One, two, three. I am, I am adopted, adopted into the family of God. Let's be all spiritual blessings. Those in the world of the world. Favored by God. Favored by God. I am. 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 God says you are. Don't agree with anything oh outside of what God says you are. Even yourself, when you find yourself saying those things that you know are not in agreement with God's word, you have to check yourself. You ever done that? I have. I have said to myself, oh, hold up. That ain't, that ain't, mm -mm, that's not what God says about me. When I find myself saying anything or thinking anything that doesn't allow what God's will, I nip it in the bud and I begin to turn that thing around as soon as I catch it. Because you can start spiraling right into a negative place. I always mess up. I never get it right. I, 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 all that. No, you need to speak what God says about you. You are blameless in his sight. Let's look a little further. What does it mean to be blessed when God says you are blessed of him? It means he's causing you to prosper, to make happy, to bestow blessings on. God wants you to prosper. God has blessed you to prosper. It's his will that you prosper. You know, sometimes we think prosperity is some kind of negative word like, oh, we money hungry and we, uh, you know, always thinking about material things. Prosperity means there's nothing lacking, nothing broken. It means I am complete in Christ Jesus. So it's not just about some financial or physical things. It's about the wholeness of my soul, the, the well-being of my person. Yes, he blesses me with stuff too. But he said, watch this. If you seek first the kingdom of God, all these things will be added unto you. 
Give and it will come back to you, pressed down, shaking together and running over. He will cause men to pour into your bosom. So yes, God will bless us, but this is not just about some material stuff. This is about being full and whole and content in Christ. I don't know about you, but there were times in my life where I felt empty, where I felt lost, where I felt alone. And it's nothing wrong with being alone once you know who you are. But when you feel alone like that makes you somehow lesser than or somehow empty, then you haven't reached that place of fullness in him. Yes, fellowship with others is important, but never to the place where it is going to take the place of my peace and my joy in Christ Jesus. When we are full, when we are blessed and we recognize who we are in him, we are lacking nothing. And that's the beauty of being in Christ. That's what he wants for you. What's the next thing he tells us? Chosen. What does that mean? We were chosen of God. Come on, somebody. He picked you on purpose. I remember this, uh, this story about a little boy who was upset. Um, and this kind of goes right, right along with being adopted. But he was upset because he found out he was adopted. And when he went to school, the kids teased him. And he came home. He was very upset. And he ran to his room. His mom didn't know what to do for him. And she called the youth pastor and the youth pastor came and talked to him in his room and he came back, he was smiling ear to ear. And she was like, well, what did you tell him? She, he said, I told him babies who are born into the family don't get a choice. But in your instance, they came and chose you on purpose. You should be happy. And he rejoiced knowing that they picked him on purpose. God chose you. He chose you before the very foundation of the world. It means he set you apart. Uh, from all the other multitudes to be dear unto himself. And I don't know about you, but that brings joy to my heart. What does it mean next? He said he made us holy and blameless, sacred, set apart. In other words, when you're holy, you're, your purpose for uh, holy use, you're sacred unto God. Um, blameless means to be without fault, without spot or wrinkle. Um, some of us will look at ourselves and say, well, he must have had a wrong person. <laughs> I am not that person, but I need you to understand is that how God sees you? Because you have been washed in the precious blood of the lamb. He doesn't see you as broken. He doesn't see you as a messed up. He sees you as blameless, as holy, as sacred, as set apart for his purposes, consecrated for his purposes. And so when you look at yourself, that's how you ought to decree and declare yourself to be. Don't speak anything that's out of alignment with what God says about you. All right. What else does he say? He says, I'm predestined. What does that mean when to say you're predestined? That means God decreed it from eternity. That means he declared it in the beginning that you would come to be his own. And, and that messes some people up because they're like, well, what does that mean? Do, do, do some people not get a choice? He knew what decision you would make when the opportunity came. Yes, he predestined you. He set you apart. I'm not here to argue for God. I'm here to just tell you what the word of God says. I'm not going to get into the theological debate of, well, does that mean he didn't want some people? Because no, I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying that what the word says to the faithful saints is, you were predestined in Christ Jesus. You adopted. That means you're accepted into the family. Just like that little boy who was upset once he found out he was adopted. But God chose you on purpose. Come on now. You were not rejected. Some people won't accept you. I don't care what you do. You try to wear your hair like them. You try to go to the places they go. You try to dress like them. All that drama you put yourself to. And God says, I accept you just the way you are. You need to accept yourself. Somebody, if you feel that, you know, just put your arms around yourself and remind yourself, I am accepted by God. I had to come to a place where I realized that men and women might not appreciate me, but God loves me just as I am. And you have to come to that place of accepting the fact that God accepts you and that's good enough. Because guess what I've found out is when you are 
feeding yourself all that negativity, you're emanating it into the atmosphere. You're sharing that, whether you know it or not, you're communicating that to others that I'm not good enough. So guess what? They will treat you accordingly. People will treat you and value you as much as you value yourself. Now that's not to say you walk around arrogant and you know boastful and all that foolishness, but I'm saying the same way you honor them, honor yourself. Accept you just like you accept them because God accepts us all. We're graced, what does that mean? Given unmerited favor. That means I don't even earn it, couldn't earn it, don't deserve it, and God favors me. How many know that you are favored by God? You know good and well you didn't deserve all the blessings that God has given you, but God in his mercy and his grace gave all that blessing to you. Of course, the greatest unmerited favor is the salvation of Jesus Christ who died on the cross for your sins. But how many times in my life have I looked and said, Lord, I'd have messed up again, but God favored me anyhow. That's how he loves us. That's how he treats us because he has bestowed his grace upon us. To be beloved means to be fond of, to be loved dearly. Do you know God loves you dearly? Like you, you close to his heart, you, you special to him. He's fond of you. You're not somebody he's like tolerating. You know, I remember years ago, Bishop Jake said something that always stood out with me. He said, go where you're celebrated, not just tolerated. Never been around people you feel like they just put up with you, but they don't really want you around, don't really appreciate you. You know, that's a reality that I've experienced, but I've also been around people who appreciate me and love on me. And let me know they love me. And I likewise can do the same. God loves you like that, girl. God loves you. Somebody said, if he had one picture on his refrigerator, it'd be yours. God, that's how much God loves you. And you were redeemed. What does that mean? You were purchased. You were bought. You were in bondage. If you've ever gone to a, or seen that, show pawn stars when you pawn something they put it on hop so to speak you say okay here's my watch tv whatever they give you a certain amount of money you have so many days to go back and redeem it to purchase it to get give the money back plus you probably gotta pay some interest i'm sure but jesus in the grace and mercy of his love redeemed you how did he do it with the payment of his precious blood. He purchased you out of bondage. He purchased you out of sin with his blood. His blood paid the penalty for every one of the sins you've ever committed because the wages of sin is death. He died for you so that now you no longer have the burden of that sin, but you have been forgiven because you've been purchased, you've been redeemed. Otherwise you would be headed straight to destruction, straight to eternal damnation, to torment and, and uh, a place that no one wants to go. And because he redeemed you, guess what? You are forgiven of every one of your sins. All your sins have been pardoned. The ones you just committed a minute ago, the ones you committed 10 years ago, the ones you committed 25 years ago. Sometimes people won't give you another chance. People will write you off and say, well, she did so-and-so 25 years ago. I ain't gonna never forgive her. Or he hurt me. I ain't gonna never forgive him. But here's the deal. We're not in the business of judging. We're in the business of uh, allowing God to be judged. We forgive just as we are forgiven. Jesus told us to do that. And then we leave the judgment to God. He knows how to deal with each person. If you have a child, you don't want your neighbor, unless y'all have some kind of special agreement, because back in the day they did. But these days, you have a child, by and large, if they do something wrong, the professor, the, I mean, pardon me, the principal calls you in to say, this is what your child did wrong. And then you deal with the consequences of that. Uh, 
because as a parent, you know what they've done, you deal with them, you put them on punishment, all that. But imagine if you messed up real bad and the principal called your mama and she came up there and she said, you know you should have got your behind work, but I'm going to give you a free pass on this one. I'm not going to even punish you. I'm going to pardon you. I'm going to forgive you. That's what Jesus did. He gave you a free get out of jail free ticket without you paying the penalty. He paid for them. And so every one of your sins is forgiven. Not one sin is on your account. Not one single sin. I don't care how huge it is. I don't care how little it is. God sees no sin attributed to you once you're in Christ Jesus. Some of us have done some things we're very ashamed of. We, we, we wish we could go back and do differently. But it's so good to know that the blood of Jesus has purified us of all unrighteousness, has cleansed us of all sin, no matter what. Thank you, Lord. And watch this. He lavished his riches upon us. That means to exist or to be at hand in abundance. He poured out so many riches upon us because that's how much he loves us. He wants us to feel the full abundance of his love. And so therefore, the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence are ours. Again, we're not just talking about some material stuff. The riches of his grace, the riches of his wisdom, the riches of his person, the things that you can't buy with money, God has poured out in abundance upon you. If you just rest in him and abide in his word, he will manifest those things and let you learn how to walk in them. And that's what we're going to focus on throughout this time. So good thing that I made it short tonight. <laughs> ah, God knew because I kept saying I need to go more, but it was like he was not letting me. So like, now we know why. Praise God. Um, I wanted to um, give you an opportunity to embrace these truths about what God says about you so that you understand how much he loves you before you try to perform, quote unquote, or be or do. Just know that he loves you just as you are. You don't have to measure up to God's love. You don't have to be perfect in God's eyes. God loves you just the way you are. And people can make you feel like you're lesser than, but I want you to understand that's not the heart of God. So I desire now that we see what all these different things mean, let's go back to where we made our confession and let's make them this time knowing what they really mean and embrace them because I have. Um, in my spirit that we need to really know and, and, and wrap our arms around what God says about us. All we gotta do is find it, right? Here we go. All right. So let's do it again, but this time let's do it with the conviction of knowing what these things really mean and, and what God is saying to us about how he views us. I want you to say this thing loud and proud. I want you to write these things down and put them on your refrigerator, put them somewhere where you can respond to them daily, remind yourself daily. Um, I have a counselor uh, I started talking to and she asked me something last week that had really been interesting, something for me to ponder. She said, what do you want? She said, you always been a blessing to this person, looking out for this, making sure the family had that. What do you want? And God is so amazing to me because he always confirms a thing. So that same day, later that day, I was flipping around and somehow I got on Steve Harvey's video on Facebook. And he said, there is no person that I know that's successful that doesn't have a vision board. You need to have a vision board of what you want. 
But then he gave this challenge and I'm giving it to you. He said, write down 300 things that you want from God. He said, I know that sounds like a lot. He said, around the 30th or 40th or 50th or whatever, you're going to start saying what? He said, but just keep writing, write the color, write the size, write the location, whatever it is, write down 300 things. He said, I'm not telling you something I heard. I'm telling you something I know. He said, if you write this down and then put it somewhere prominent in front of yourself, he said, I guarantee you at the end of the year, you'll be able to look back and scratch off probably 70 of those things easily. And I thought that was an interesting proposition. And I think as, as Hosea said, write the vision, make it plain uh, that those who read it can run with it. Uh, in other words, we are people who, as we visualize, as we think on a thing, as we uh, focus on a thing, get our focus in line with that vision, of course, we ask God's blessings on that vision because he tied it in the prayer and so forth. Um, but the bottom line is there's something about visualizing truth. And so when I open a prayer, or the prayer line, open the mic this time, I want you to confess this, but I want you to get this in your spirit and put this stuff in a place where you can see it over and over and over so it gets in your spirit. And I want you, because I'm, I started my list. I didn't get very far. I confess. I've had to go back and pick up some more. But I want you to do the same. Write down your 300 things because I believe God will bless and honor your prayer. But we're going to confess what God says about us. Let me allow you to unmute yourself. Let's see here. Okay, so let's try one more time. We're going to read them all together again. This time we're going to do it with a little attitude now that we understand who we are <laughs> and what these things mean. So here we go again on three. One, two, three. I am by God. Favored by God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I am. I am. That's who you are. Don't Amen. say anything different from that. Amen. That Amen. 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 Amen.